Hello valued viewers, I hope you are all doing very well. This video is about the little known Pittsburgh and West Virginia's 2664 super articulated locomotive. Enjoy. The Pittsburgh and West Virginia pioneered the 2664 type of simple articulated locomotive with the three members of the J1 class that Baldwin Locomotive Works delivered in 1934. This class rolled on 64-inch drivers, sustained 225 psi of boiler pressure, and had four cylinders measuring 23 by 32 inches. Designed to meet the bridge railroad's need for faster train speeds as part of the alphabet route, they had a large bell pair firebox of more than 102 square feet, plus 5,914 square feet of evaporative heating surface and 1,873 square feet of superheating surface. The J1 class exerted 101,171 pounds of tractive effort and weighed 528,040 pounds. This J1 class of super articulated was also equipped with a tender booster which was omitted in the succeeding J2 class of four locomotives. Only three other railroads used the 2664 type. The Seaboard Airline sold its 10 to the Baltimore and Ohio in 1946, but it was the Norfolk and Western which perfected the design into its famous Class A locomotives, of which number 1218 remains the sole survivor of the Norfolk and Western's 2664 type. The Pittsburgh and West Virginia Railway Company operated some 132 miles of road that made connection with the Western Maryland, New York Central, Pennsylvania Railroad, and the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad. Their main field of activity was the Great Iron and Steel area in the Pittsburgh District. And with this particular connection, they carried all sorts of freight and considerable volume. Baldwin Mikados had handled this traffic for years, but in 1934, the Pittsburgh and West Virginia purchased three 2664 type single expansion articulated locomotives for heavy freight haul. And when completed, these locomotives traveled from Eddystone to Pittsburgh under their own steam instead of the usual procedure of being shipped dead on its own wheels accompanied by a messenger. There was a Pennsylvania Railroad look about these locomotives due to the huge bell pair firebox boiler and more than a hint of the Rhodes Class M1s with its long 74-inch combustion chamber that extended into the boiler barrel. This boiler was known as the straight top wagon bottom type which indicated that the top was straight but the bottom tapered in width as it approached the firebox, just the opposite of the wagon top or conical connection boiler where the reverse occurred. The four J2 duplicate locomotives completed in 1936 omitted the auxiliary locomotive booster on the tender truck. The Pittsburgh and West Virginia Railway was the first railroad to incorporate and use the 2664 wheel arrangement. And as such, these locomotives were designed back to front. First consideration was given to providing the firebox boiler combination capable of the required horsepower output, which meant a deep bell pair firebox of liberal grate area located entirely behind the driving wheels. The 63 inch driver size of these locomotives didn't bother the Pittsburgh and West Virginia because as a coal road, it didn't dabble in high speeds anyway. Before purchasing these new 2664s, Baldwin had to persuade the Pittsburgh and West Virginia that it wouldn't duplicate the B&O Railroad's experience with some of their 2662 designs. And Baldwin assured the Pittsburgh and West Virginia of this fact because Baldwin went to school on Alco's development of a front engine setup based on a hinge, or if you will, the essential ingredient of which uh, tightening up the hinge and preventing pitch change in the front unit. So, in other words, Baldwin borrowed Alco's hinge technology for their articulated locomotives. And as a result of utilizing its newly found hinge system, the change in behavior and performance was dramatic in this new 2664 design of the J1s and, and later the J2s. They all ran beautifully with excellent traction. The success of this design proved to Baldwin that other roads would likely also find interest in their new locomotive. And most curiously, of all the lines which may have interest in this new 2664 arrangement, it was the Southern System which purchased the wheel arrangement next. A year after the Pittsburgh and West Virginia acquired its first example, the Seaboard Airline went to Baldwin and ordered a small roster of five starting in 1935. And ultimately, the Norfolk and Western developed the most powerful 2664 
with his class A and also had the largest fleet of this class, obtaining 43 locomotives between 1936 and 1950. All were equipped with cast frames, roller bearing axles, and the last five were the continents only articulated locomotives equipped with lightweight roller bearing side and main rods. The Class A 2664s set many performance records until they were replaced by diesels in 1959. And of the 60 total 2664 locomotives built, only the Norfolk and Western's number 1218 survives today and currently operates occasional excursion services. And with that, the following specifications apply to the Pittsburgh and West Virginia Railways 2664, Class J1, and Class J2. The total number built was 7 units, number 1100 to 1106. All were built by Baldwin starting in the year of 1934. The valve gears used was wall shirts. The locomotive weighed 528,040 pounds. The weight on the drivers was 397,300 pounds. The tendered weighed 387,600 pounds, and the total weight combined of the locomotive and tender was 915,640 pounds. The tender's water capacity was 20,000 U.S. gallons. The tender fuel capacity, which was coal, was 25 tons. The main driver diameter was 64 inches. The boiler pressure was 225 PSI. The high pressure cylinders were 4 at 23 inch by 32 inch. The total tractive effort was 101,171 pounds. A booster provided 16,000 additional uh, tractive effort tractor effort in the J1s. The factor of adhesion was 3.93. Total firebox area was 499 square feet. The grade area was 102.30 square feet. And the railroad classifications was J1 and J2. And with that, I'll wrap up the video, and I shall thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed today's content, please hit the like button. And also, if you've not subscribed, please do so, as both the like and the su subscribe buttons help the channel grow enormously. And if you don't want to contribute on the super things a part of it, you can visit our print shop at nickelplatelimited at se.com. Thank you very much.